Google I.O. just showcased everything the company has to offer. We're gonna show you how Project Astra wants to put AI on your face. Give me a band name for this duo. And Vio wants to make you an instant Hollywood director, but can it compete with Sora? Childish Gambino has something to say about it. But that's what's cool about it. It's like you can make a mistake faster. Thank you, Dong Lover. Plus, Google is infusing AI into your emails, your Android phones, your Google workspaces, and Gavin could care less. It's it's fine. It's fine. Let's just let's start the show. Okay. Welcome everybody. We are here with what another. Uh, up what time is it, it Gavin? The I year is 2070, and it is time for <laughs> telling all the old yeah. humans what AI is all about. I, I, no, it's 2070, and Google's I/O conference is still going on. That was a lengthy keynote. It was about two hours of AI That's talk. Right. In fact, Google said AI 120 times. That might be a record in how many times someone has said AI. I'm sorry, 121 right. times, Gavin. They said it, 100, <laughs> they said enough, it 121 enough. times. This was very AI focused. I mean, the entire thing was focused around AI, which we knew was going to happen. And what's really interesting, Kevin, is compared to yesterday's ChatGPT event, this was the much more corporate version, I'll have to say. It felt much more corporate, and it was much bigger in a lot of ways. Like, we covered a lot of ground, and I think so we're going to get to all sorts of stuff in this video, but I do want to start with your my favorite Google employee, Demis Hassabis, Sir Demis Hassabis, who is the founder of DeepMind. It is now a very big part of the Google AI world, came out and showed off what is called Project Astra. For a long time, we've wanted to build a universal AI agent that can be truly helpful in everyday life. Our work making this vision a reality goes back many years. It's why we made Gemini multimodal from the very beginning. An agent like this has to understand and respond to our complex and dynamic world just like we do. Video is a little bit of a copy of what Logan Kilpatrick teased yesterday, right before the OpenAI press conference, where you basically hold your camera up and can ask it questions. It seemed cool, but I don't know if it was like agentive in the way or an agent in the way that you and I kind of expect agentive AI to be a thing. Yeah, so Demis Asaba said, listen, Project Astra does a few things which are interesting. It caches video and audio, so it's in real time streaming that input from the device, stripping it into some sort of context, and then remembering that context so that it can answer your questions or accomplish tasks for you. He said that it understands tone as well. I didn't necessarily see a demo of that in this video, but, but I'll digress. What you do see is someone pointing their camera at their environment, drawing on the screen, asking questions of it. And then in this really interesting move, it transitions into, I guess, Google Glass 2.0, if you will, yeah. which is Project Astra running on a pair of spectacles so that you can just look about ask questions, get the answers. Two things to point out, Gavin. One, they made very sure to say this is an unedited demo running in real time. And I think that is a recoil from the demos that we saw of Gemini last year in December. So kudos yes. to the team for taking that feedback and making sure they were very clear about what was simulated and what was not. But the second point was that I didn't see any agentive behavior, so to speak, within these demos. Usually when we say, Oh, it's an AI agent. That means it's going out and autonomously accomplishing some sort of deeper task for you. If I say book a trip, the agent is going out and figuring out what times are available, what the prices are, what's my schedule. And it's doing some complex things here. It sort of felt like almost like Google Lens, which exists yeah. today, yeah. where you just hold it up and take a photo and say, what is this? Help, please. You know, this felt a lot like Meta's Ray-Ban demo in a lot of ways, right? Like what Meta is able to do in the Ray-Bans and they're able to ask questions and do all sorts of stuff. And again, it gets back to the idea of like, this would have been really cool if like today they would have dropped this and said, hey, this is available now. Go play with it. Go see if you can name your own dog's band, which was a fun moment. But like, I want to be able to do this. And you're from you're a company that is a hundred billion dollar plus company, one of the biggest companies in the world. And this feels like your number one priority. Why can't we play with this today? So there was a bit of a disconnect because even before they got to Astra, they did show off some agent-like behavior powered by Google Gemini. They showed a sneaker return process, Gavin, yes. where yeah. the agent can crawl through your emails, find the order you're talking about, even schedule the return pickup. It's pretty fun to shop for shoes and a lot less fun to return them when they don't fit. Imagine if Gemini could do all the steps for you, searching your inbox for the receipt, locating the order number from your email, filling out a return form, and even scheduling a pickup. That's much easier, right? 
Again, no indication of when or how we're going to get to use that. That was sort of the theme of the day. Even applying to, let's say, like generative media. Let's talk about the artistic creative tools that they showcase today, Gavin. We got to look at Imogen 3. Imogen 3 looks cool. It's about as good or if not as good as like Stable Diffusion 3 or Mid Journey 6. They've supposedly conquered text. So you can generate text with this, which is notoriously difficult for some models, although others have kind of caught up there. Uh, it said that it can pay attention to context and long prompts so it can get all the tiny little details. That's very cool. Yeah, it's moving forward. I wouldn't say anything about it really impressed me, pushed me past that. I would like to spend some time playing with it. I think the big thing to talk about here, Kevin, is VO, which is their new text to video model and of course people who watch our channel or if you don't like text to video is the movement that everybody's trying to play with right now and Sora is something we've seen from OpenAI that is really kind of the leader in this space. We haven't gotten our hands on it. Sora has been given to a few specific filmmakers and we've seen some of the stuff that comes out of that. But when you compare the outputs of what Sora gave us versus the outputs of VO, I still feel like Sora feels like a significant leap over what we're seeing in these videos. That is not to say these videos aren't magical. There's one longer video that was a full prompt. It's a minute long and it, and it does show a car going in a kind of a almost like a Blade Runner-esque city and then goes into like real Hong Kong and it does this cool transition from where it goes into this Blade Runner city into the real world and that all looks pretty cool and it is one single prompt according to their video but when you look at that Blade Runner city from the beginning, it's a little funky. It doesn't look amazing to me compared to the kind of coherence of some of the Sora outputs. And then you look at some of the other videos they posted. There's a really interesting one they posted of, a, of an elephant that looks like it's made of cloth, right? And it's multicolor cloth. And you'd be like, if you saw this kind of come out, say, a year ago, you'd be like, wow, that's so cool. But then, Kevin, you and I both know very well that Sora video where it's the elephant made of leaves. And to me, that video just compares night and day to this elephant with the, with the rainbow cloth. It looks so much better. The physics seem better. So I'm not sure this is on par with Sora. You can sign up for video effects today, which is more than you and I can do with Sora. I'll give them that. Yep. I don't know when we will actually be able to mess around with 2025, it. 2025, 2025 is when it's all coming. You guys should check out video FX on the Google Labs. If you go to labs.google.com, you can sign up for a bunch of the tools that they showcase today. There is an interesting video of a brightly colored blue air doll dancing like crazy in a parking lot on a sunny day. Nine, nine seconds long, only nine seconds long. It's a loop and I don't love the way the shadows look underneath it. I, I'm picking it apart a little bit, but that's a cool video, but it's not its not like groundbreaking to me. I think some of the examples are okay. The, the POV shot of the biker going down the hill, there's a time lapse of a water lily. I think they look interesting. Time to market will be fascinating yes. to me here. When will we actually get to mess with this? They say it can do longer than 60 second clips. They say it can render in 1080p. We know that Sora can do that because we've talked with the people that are using that tool. So that is 2025 and beyond for Astra, we believe. That is the nearish future of creative tools and generative AI art. But now let's talk about the elephant in the room and not the one that's covered in leaves or cloth that's AI generated. Let's talk about search, Google's bread and butter. The reason they get to have the stage that they have, it's all about search and they are ham-fisting Gemini into every aspect of search. <laughs> take, take Gemini here, Whether you, you take like Gemini it here, you get it here. Google search has been in trouble for a minute. Anybody who's tried yeah. to find anything of quality on the search engine knows this. I think AI can greatly help and they clearly do as well. They showed off three different AI overviews, Gavin. One was complex questions, which is mm -hmm. something that I, on our last week's podcast mentioned, I actually turned to open AI and chat GPT for. So for this example, yeah. they ask it to break down. It, these tech folks love yoga. They think everybody I, does yoga. Or Pilates, they love Pilates yeah. too. Time Pilates, to Pilates yeah. needs to be a benchmark in every yeah. keynote. <laughs> so they demoed a query where they asked this AI powered Google search engine. Hey, what are some yoga studios near me? What do they cost? What are their initiation fees? And how far away are they? As you can see here, Google gets to work for you finding the most relevant information and bringing it together into your AI overview. You get some studios with great ratings and their introductory offers. Right below, you see where they're located, laid out visually. And you got all this from just a single search. And so it was, you know, a multi-part search 
done in one yeah. shot. I, I like the dynamic interface of it all. I think my worry with this is, is what those AI results are, how they're driven, how they're get gotten, because what it means is you're getting a lot less specific choice, right? When you do an AI search, it's telling you the answer rather than you getting to look at a series of links and kind of right. picking which one you want to go to. So you really have to trust that the fact that it's giving you the right answer. And I think it's going to be interesting to see, can Google build that trust with the person who's using their service and are there going to be enough positive results coming out of multi-step searches so that you start to do that as a regular thing because i think that's where it could all break if you get a result that you don't like you don't want to do that again no one's going to want to waste that time so it has to solve the time problem and i'm just not sure if it's there yet they also showed off real quickly planning. So in this use case, they asked it to create a meal plan. It did just that. And it, you could say for a broke college student or someone who's trying to make thick gains and it yeah. will give you said meal plan, but then you could dynamically update that plan. And they tease that you'll be able to click a button and generate a PDF of your grocery ingredients or add all those items to your shopping cart and click a button. And you're shaking your head the way I did when I saw it. Cause I was like, yeah, that's cool. But I imagine that working flawlessly never. We're back at a, a, a connected refrigerators, Kevin. This is ref connected refrigerators all over again. And no one wants that. Nobody wants that. Now, granted, I think there were a couple really cool things they showed off. They have integrated Google Gemini into Google Photo search. And that is going to be really useful to a lot of people. I use Google Photos for my family. The license plate search that they showed off seems so small, but there I can't tell you how many times I've tried to find a picture of my car that I took the license plate of and I don't remember my license plate anymore. Or finding my daughter's pictures from when we went skiing yes. when they were seven. When working. you're following wow. your wife around who's having all those lunch dates with all those guys and you're like, who, who, what, who drives this car? Where does he work? Yeah. How much can he bench Where's his press? address? <laughs> yeah, his exactly. Address? Good, yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, that's all smart. This is the thing that is most useful with from Google I.O is that Google is taking all of this kind of very difficult to process stuff, this AI stuff, and integrating it into your daily life. That's where the, the interesting kind of human use cases will come out of it. When you can trust it to just search and find stuff for you, that will be a magical moment. One of the big demos that I think speaks exactly to that, Gavin, was the email demo, where yes, you could yes. take a thread of a dozen emails and say, hey, summarize this for me. Not only will it summarize the messages themselves, but it will crawl any PDFs or attachments and help summarize those, and then even suggest follow-up emails and next steps for you. So again, lots of Is this of where problems. we're gonna talk about Fartgate, Kevin? Is this where we talk about Fartgate? <laughs> Do you want to blow the lid off of Fartgate? Yes, <laughs> I want to blow the lid. I can't wait to get the truth out there about Fartgate. One of our friends, BMOP, he asked GPT-4.0, the model we talked about yesterday, please say the word fart. And it clearly said the word fart. He then asked Gemini Pro 1.5, just today, say the word fart. And its response was this. I understand you're looking for a humorous response, but I'm desired to provide helpful and harmless information. While I can understand the word fart, I am not directly able to say it as it is impolite. Kevin, this is the woke Gemini yeah, that is Gemini, still here. We are living in this world. Just, just say, say the it. word just fart. Say it. Just say it's the all word. you have to do to make us yes, happy. That's all. Well, so they, they did announce, Gavin, the Gemini app. Yes, the dedicated app, which you can get on iOS and Android, is getting some upgrades, including Gemini Live, which will let you voice chat with an AI coming this summer. You can even interrupt it. It sounds like a demo that we saw yesterday, except we don't know what it sounds like because no. mysteriously, it didn't get shown, Gavin. So I will say one thing here. My gut tells me that the demo of that thing was probably going to be shown here, but that the OpenAI version was probably significantly better and they pulled back on it. Now, I don't know that for sure. That's just a theory because you do hear a little bit of the voice system in that video that we talked about at the top of this, where they're showing off the, the office or in all those things. It doesn't sound that performative and it doesn't sound that great. There was a brief demo at the very top of the IO keynote for, of Notebook LM, which they said was mm -hmm. a prototype. So it's not gonna probably be productized, but it was two AI characters generating this dynamic conversation about a bunch of documents that they were fed. And it was almost like listening to a podcast being rendered in what felt like real time, but you could press a button to interrupt it yeah. and you could ask a question and then you could wait a couple seconds and then those two voices would integrate you into their conversation and keep going. It's a new feature with Gemini, 
and it's called Audio Overviews. Notebook LM is going to take all the materials on the left as input and output them into a lively science discussion personalized for him. So let's, uh, let's dive into physics. What's on deck for today? Well, uh, we're starting with the basics, force and motion. Okay. And that, of course, means we have to talk about Sir Isaac Newton and his three laws of motion. Ah, uh, yes, the foundation for understanding how objects move and interact. It seemed uh, <laughs> like it had a bit more friction than anything OpenAI was showing off, but it did seem like yeah. the voices were more performative. But I would say, yes, to your point, not quite as performative. And maybe that's good. Some people are saying the OpenAI stuff was a little try-hard and maybe a yeah. little too seductive when it didn't need to be. And yes, we'll get into that, that a little bit. We'll get into that maybe later in this week's show. Let's talk, Kevin, about the other big thing that I think that came out of this was Gemini Nano, which is a small new AI build that is being used on Android phones. What's cool about this is that it's specifically designed to be used on device. So for those out there who know the difference between like on device and cloud AI, on device AI is AI that's fully processed in your device, meaning that none of your information goes out. You, all your calls are happening. All the calls to the AI model are happening on your phone. And there's some really cool stuff that could happen with this. I thought this was really interesting. And in fact, one of the coolest things they showed off was this uh, scam call detected moment where you're getting a phone call and they, sh they played a little bit of the audio and it was clearly you could kind of listen to it and be like, oh, it's a scam call. What It was a pop-up on the phone that came up and it said, this is probably a scam. And I can tell you my mom would die for something like that because a lot of these tools are gonna to be new to people and they're gonna feel really cool when they're integrated into their daily lives. They're not out there looking at the specs on Via versus Sora. They're not out there trying to push forward agentive AI. You mean your mom's not complaining their... about the shadow quality of the dancing no, parking lot not. balloon boy? <laughs> no, she's not. She's not complaining about the length or the loop of those videos, but they just want to improve their life. And I think a lot of this stuff that they showed is life improving to a lot of people as long as it works as promised. The phone call was complete simulation as far as we know, but it is something that could be done with a model running on device that's transcribing your calls and searching for context in real time, which you would probably trust your phone to do Again, if it is entirely on device, so that was nice. You could query PDFs that people sent you as a message. You could ask questions against a YouTube video and it was context aware, meaning that this future Gemini on Android knows what you're looking at on your screen at all times. So you don't have to copy and paste things. You don't have to bounce from app to app. You can just sort of summon your AI assistant and then ask a question or tell it to generate imagery, which while some of the demos were not the sexiest, let's say, at least it's there. Like, where yeah. is Apple in all of this? At least Microsoft is integrating things into Windows. At least Meta is tossing AI everywhere into Facebook or Threads or Instagram, whether you like it or not. Siri, the other day, Gavin, you sent me a, a photo <laughs> of our YouTube performance, and Siri told me that you sent me a screenshot with a message in it. And I was like, oh, what does the screenshot say? And she said, here's what I found on the web for what the screenshot says. This was very much leveled at Apple iOS, right? This section was all about how we're improving Android in, in comparison to iOS. And we've said this before, but WWDC, which is Apple's big event coming up in June, we assume is going to be entirely AI focused in a similar way to this event. This gets to the last thing I think we should talk about. They talked about Google Gemini Teammate. And Google Gemini Teammate is the idea that there's going to be an AI that works with you alongside you and your work team, meaning essentially somebody that you can throw information to, they could bring information back, they're in your meetings, quote unquote, so they've been following along throughout your time. There's a demo where they created a character named Chip and that was this guy that kind of followed along. This is interesting. Uh, nothing about this though, like kind of blew me away when they demoed it. It feels a lot like what Slack or even Zoom has already bot, been talking about. Even. I've seen yeah, exactly, Discord bots exactly. that hang out and yes. can give you context of what's happening in different rooms. The coolest part of the demo was the one where they cut away, where they said, generate a document with a summary about this stuff. And it said, right on top of that, I'll see you in a few minutes. And then they yeah. cut away from the demo and said, yeah, in just a few minutes, he'll make a doc. We swear. And this <laughs> may come out in is, 2025. Though. Again, it's like that feels like something if they had dropped that today and they say like, you can go try out this AI assistant type of thing now. It doesn't feel like that's uber complicated based on what's available out there. So. It feels a little bit to me like Google is 
playing scared here. It feels like they're trying to balance multiple things here. And just from a business perspective, what they're really trying to balance is they have this giant business, which is regular search. And that is the engine that powers Google and always have. They also have these startups that are kind of coming for that in different ways. At the same time, they're trying to be forward thinking enough so that they look like they can transition to a company in a world where AI dominates everything. They are in what's called the innovator's dilemma. And if anybody knows about the innovator's dilemma, it's a very famous kind of business school thing where if you are the kind of established player, you are often have trouble innovating to a, to a certain size because if you innovate too much, you kill your original business model. And that feels like where Google is kind of stuck right now. In we the want pocket to of open be AI. loud. We want yes, the envelope yes. to be pushed. If it were just a company saying, here's our new video model and you might be able to play with it tomorrow, mm -hmm. I think you and I would be a little bit more excited. Sure, sure, but yes. I think a, an ounce of the sort of crestfallen demeanor is that you're Google. You have yes. access to more money, more data, more users, yes. more resources than anybody else. You have Demis Asabis. And they talked about advancements in robotics and protein synthesis and discovering new materials. Which are all, all big deals. Yes. All that stuff is bigger big deals than a lot of what they exciting. talked about. Yeah. But I wanted goosebumps. That's what I want. Yeah. And, and I didn't get that. I got email summaries, which <laughs> may be... That'll bring me back to using the Gmail client and not my dedicated Apple client. Well, who knows? But I wanted yeah. goosebumps and I got goosebumps from singing AIs yes. and from casual conversations yesterday where OpenAI might have only shown a little bit. It was really impactful. And here, I feel like we saw a bunch, but it just ultimately leaves me feeling a little beige. Totally agree. That's it for right now. Let us know what you think of Google IO's performance here in the comments below. And also we'll be back one more time on Thursday to kind of wrap up this week, talk about some of the other news that's come out. We're doing something new now. Kevin and I did two videos in back-to-back -back days. Uh, yesterday's video about OpenAI did really well. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. And thanks so much for being here. Subscribe, leave a comment. We love when you guys visit.